Hello and welcome. My name is Jacob. This is Trade Happy, a platform for traders around the world to be happy and consistently profitable. And in today's video, uh, we've got another podcast. I know I haven't been really uh, consistently kind of uploading these podcasts. Um, I'm trying to get really, really good people onto the podcast for you guys that I feel that you guys are going to want to see and also um, can give you guys some value. I'm hoping that today's guest can do that. Um, the call was really good. I hope that you guys enjoy this and get some value from it. Um, my guest today has come from an institutional background. Um, he is the CEO of a uh, proprietary firm called Audacity Capital. I know that a few of you guys in the live streams were asking about Audacity Capital, and I mentioned that we do have a podcast coming out um, with him in it, and that you should wait for that. Uh, well, here it is, and yeah, I hope I hope that you enjoy it. Um, please welcome Kareem. For anyone that doesn't know who you are, can you just tell us a bit about yourself? Sure. Uh, my name is Karim uh, Yusfi. I'm uh, the CEO and the founder of Ola City Capital. Just to give you a small uh, background of the company and myself and what we are doing and we are trying to achieve, uh, Ola City Capital is a prop trading firm. Uh, we are based in the city of London. We started eight years ago um, in the financial industry. Uh, it was mainly uh, just London, city of London coming out of the, the recession. For that, it wasn't quite a good time, to be honest, to start a prop trading firm. Mm -hmm. But we were quite positive, uh, looking to uh, to go for an adventure and looking for a good opportunity uh, to to get some new traders. Uh, we started in Tower Hill, which is not far uh, from the city, just in a small office with four people. And now, after all those years, we are more than 600 plus traders. They trade for us all around around the world. Uh, the main idea behind Audacity Capital is actually to create the right environment for traders to perform and to offer them all what they need uh, in order to improve uh, their profitability and make more profit for themselves and for the company. Uh, we run two programs at the moment. The first one is called the Hidden Talents Program, which is mainly designed for people that have experience and uh, they never trade, uh, but they want to become professional traders but they don't know where and when to start. Uh, so that's what we do. We just take them on board, uh, we train them, and later we allocate for them our capital and they start trading for us. And we've got the second program, which is the Funded Trader Program, is mainly for people, they got experience, they have been trading profitably, they have a good track record, they know what they're doing, and they have a good skill set, but they don't have enough capital. They just have this problem of lack of capital. So that's the deal with them is very simple. We take them through an onboarding process, an interview process. And if we think they are good and they can produce a good profit for the market, we allocate for them the capital. This is regarding other city capital. And for myself, I come from an institutional background. And the idea to create this uh, firm, it was mainly because I was in a need of this service in the past. Uh, when I left uh, the corporate world and the banking industry, uh, you know, when you're trading for a big firm and a uh, big company, or uh, you have all these backup and support on a daily basis in terms of capital, logistic, uh, technology. But when you leave, you are just by yourself, you know. So that I was just trying to raise funds for my capital, uh, for my, my strategy, because back then I was having quite a good strategy. I was looking, you know, dreaming of freedom and uh, being like a prop trader and uh, raise funds. And uh, I would uh, be my own boss and uh, trade for capital and be more comfortable and more have more time to, 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 to enjoy my, my life. For that, uh, I was looking for, for people, for potential investors, uh, contacting them on a daily basis, uh, trying to convince them to invest in my strategy. But it wasn't that the case, you know. Sometimes it's really hard because especially when you are talking to people, they don't understand the industry and they're just under this impression of... Uh, stigma of like they make a lot of money within 24 hours and they can just become millionaires and things like you know how hollywood is contributing mm. in this uh, in this idea so that you need a long time you need a lot of money you need to meet a lot of people this time consuming process 
and it, it takes ages. And sometimes you meet those people, you know, they got any clue about the NDC. They ask you to make a couple hundred percent within two, one week or two weeks. And for that, it just, it just, uh, it was good experience, but it wasn't actually quite pleasant to be honest, and didn't lead to any any good uh, concrete things, you know. For that. Uh, I was looking and uh, talking to people, and uh, I just got this idea with a group of my ex-colleagues, uh, institutional traders as well, to create a platform, uh, where a company, a prop trading, where we can offer to trader all what he needs in order for him to produce profit and just do his job. So this yeah. is the problem. Uh, and uh, we we come up with uh, the with other city, the idea of other city capital and uh, but back then it wasn't that easy because when you are new in the industry no one knows you because you are uh, you know uh, what industry is all based on, on trust is based on uh, reputation and uh, you know when you are new brand new it's quite hard to convince people but that we're just trying to attract the best traders and. Uh, and we started with just with a small office, and later we moved to a bigger office. And now we are uh, we are one of the top three firms here in the city, which is quite uh, an interesting journey. Amazing. Um, yeah, that sounds really good. So you mentioned that you came from an institutional background. Um, how did you get started in trading yourself? Yeah, for myself, actually, I was mainly start. Back then, I started with like a traditional way of joining the industry, which is um, we are going to come back to this later on, uh, because now it's changing. Uh, the NDC is more open to many people and uh, with different works of life and different backgrounds. For me, I, I come out. Uh, I just moved from the university. I got an internship in in a bank in in Germany, and uh, from this internship, I tried to learn. And you know, you know, when you are young and you're just hungry to learn and develop your, your skill. And I just got lucky and secured a, a position with them. Uh, I was back then trading oil. It was quite an interesting time to learn. Uh, and uh, my, my background actually is FX. Uh, before leaving my, my last position, it was an FX strategist in, 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 in a bank in Germany. For that, uh, but now, uh, because of uh, the technology uh, and Many people that are interested in the financial industry, uh, the open the doors are more open for more people. And uh, we think here at the city capital, and it's my personal view as well, that the superstars of the industry they are not going to come from the traditional way, uh, traditional uh, background like myself, institutional university, you join a bank or a hedge fund, you learn, and later you are you are by yourself, or you can leave the top of trading, or you finish your career. There. I think the superstars that are coming. Uh, from different works of life, that the retail traders. This is what people we are talking to at the moment. Uh, we've got some wonderful stories from people uh, coming from different uh, jobs. They did different uh, studies in the past. Someone he studied art, another guy studied psychology, another guy studied uh, uh, music, and now they're trading. You know, they become traders. Uh, and this is, I think, what we what it makes. Uh, uh, trading and industry in general changing fast because of uh, of technology and uh, people are joining. But that, uh, I think uh, now uh, in the city of London uh, and in general in the financial hubs uh, is not only people who are working for the bank that are making money like it used to be 10 or 20 years ago. Now you've got some people that are just trading from their homes from you know uh, without small capital but they're just making quite a good profit with a minimum of minimum of resources because mm. i know i've been there and i know that when you're trying trading by yourself it's not that fun sometimes especially because you don't have this backup you don't have the support and you are just by yourself against multi-billion market players who are just uh, there with all their resources trying to make profit uh, yeah, so this is actually how I started. Uh, but the transition, if you're going to meet, ask me about this, uh, Jacob, uh, the transition between moving from an institutional trading style to a prop trading style or prop trading has been quite interesting and fascinating because it's completely a different world. I can confirm to you that because when you are trading 
uh, for a bank or an institution or a hedge fund, you are you, you, technically you, you have less headache and less stress and you are not uh, concerned about some things and you have a different set of, pro- of issues and problems and challenges. But when you're trading by yourself as a prop trader, uh, you have, you are in the front line. If you want me to put it that way, you're in the front line and you are just by yourself. You are naked in the street and you need to make sure that you survive. You need to make sure that you make profit and you, you need to make sure that you keep learning and progressing in daily basis in order to improve your profitability and make a living between those all those big players who are trying to take your money. Mm. Yeah. So the so for any kind of um, traders out there that aren't prop traders, but they are looking at being a prop trader, do you have any advice for these traders that are looking to go down that road? Yeah, I got I got actually asked this question a lot uh, for someone who is trying to or maybe thinking to, 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 to become trader or he's a prop trader who is trading at the moment. Mm. What I can say, uh, the best uh, learning experience is to start trading live as soon as possible. Because many people, uh, and as I told you, do, we do this hidden talent program and we have seen uh, hundreds of hundreds of people joining for the last eight years and we have seen all stories of people uh, trying to make it and some people they, 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 they made it and some people they couldn't uh, and the, the, the always this problem it keeps repeating and the, the mistake they did most of the, of, the prop tra- prop, uh, of the beginners of the newbies is they spend too much time on demo accounts I know some sounds quite weird because many people now they are promoting the demo account they said it's good to learn it's good to to develop your skill and it's good to practice and it's good to to down take any risk. But I can confirm to you from like a, a deep research we did here at Audacity Capital that your real journey is going to start when you start trading real money. Before mm. that, you can't consider it as a trading because uh, in trading it's all about psychology and. Demo account is good. I'm not against it because all we have been there, I've been in simulation, especially when you're trading in a for, for a firm, they kill you with with the with simulation and demo account. But it just uh, is not it's not it's not fun, you know. It's not a good thing because when you are trading in in a demo account, you are just learning bad habits, and by learning bad habits, you're going to keep them all with you all your trading career. For that, it's going to teach you bad habits. There is no psychological element. It's different environment, different pricing, different execution, and it's not trading. You are just uh, playing in a way or another. Uh, simulation is good uh, to learn the platform, to do practice the technical analysis, to get an idea, but to trade and to develop, uh, I don't think is, is the right approach. This is the first thing. Because at the end, uh, trading to become a profitable trader is a journey. And when you start your journey, you're going to start from zero to reach 100. Uh, and by reaching 100, you become profitable and you have this skill set of producing alpha and producing money from the market on a daily basis, on a weekly basis. So that if you are not going to start your journey with real money, you are not starting yet. You are just preparing yourself to start. Hmm. This is the, always the, the advice I would like to give to anyone who's thinking to start his journey, that he starts, even if it's small, I'm not uh, encouraging people to to gamble their money or just to break their bank, uh, bank account or things like that. Just small account, $50 account, $100 account with real money, better than 1,000 or, or five uh, or 1 million account with demo account. Because this $50 or $100 is going to teach you the real thing. You're going to feel the pressure of losing. You're going to feel the reward of making profit. And you're going to feel this feeling when the market hits you. And it's all about this. It's a journey and you are developing yourself on a daily basis. Uh, if, if you ask me to compare this, it's like, uh, it's like a pilot. I don't know if you are familiar with the, with the industry. Uh, with this industry, when they, when the, the, the airline, when they hire a pilot, they just in the CVs they put how many hours they they fly, you know, 
and you got some experience uh, pilots. They, they they fly like three, four thousand hours, and you got some people that are just starting. They fly a couple hundred. Is the same thing for trading. So that, uh, your journey and your experience is going to be just based on how many live trades you place in live environment. Uh, for that, if you are still in demo accounts, I don't think is is is, is time consuming and is going to, as I said, waste a lot of time for you. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, I think that traders need to trade live. Um, so yeah, I 100% agree with that. So what's something that you see in those winning traders that you don't see in the in the losing traders? Uh, yeah, this is a good question. We did an experiment in the past. Uh, I think it was a couple of years ago, where we took a group of traders, uh, new newbies, uh, they never traded in the past, we took them five and we give them everything the same. Same strategy, same platform, same execution, uh, same account size, same, everything is the same. Okay, same training, same uh, risk parameters, same rules, everything is the same. And you've got some people, they made, they made money and some people they lost. Uh, and the, the one million question here is why? Why someone He's getting the same training, and he has everything the same as his, his, his colleague, and he's losing money. And we just found out that uh, the most important element is the, is the character, is the personality, how you perceive things, how you react, mm -hmm. how your vision, how your mindset. When you lose money, how you feel, and when you feel this feeling, how you react to this decision. You know, because uh, trading and the job of trading is one of the most difficult jobs in, in the world because uh, there is a problem of taking too much decisions with a short period of time. And every decision you take, you have to make yourself accountable and you're going to assume the responsibility of taking it. And this is quite challenging for our mental uh, ability. It's like politicians, it's like, you know, uh, it just, Every decision you take, you're going to care, to have like, you know, difficult uh, uh, results coming from from this, and you've got to assume that. And for that, the character is playing a very important role. And everyone is different. Everyone he he got his own character. Everyone see it differently, and everyone he has his own way of doing it. Because trading, uh, like many people, they ask me. Um, I remember last time in a conference, one of the guys, he asked me a good question. He said to me, do you think trading is a science? And me personally, I don't think it's a science. I think it's because the science is an exact thing, you know, it's an exact science. You can say, I do A, I get B. I, I get B, I do, uh, I get C. You know, it's like one plus one equal two. But in trading, it's like an art. I, I can say trading is more like an art because you can do it in a different ways, and everyone he's making is doing it right. Everyone he's doing it with his own way, and at the end, everyone he's right. And this is what it makes quite decent this year, this job, interesting and fascinating, and it's just quite uh, like passionate. It's passion. We, we enjoy doing it on daily basis. Yeah. And um, kind of going back to when you were talking about the transition from um, the institutions to the prop trading um mm -hmm. obviously for some traders that could be quite stressful do you have any uh tips for traders to reduce stress when trading yeah one of the most challenging thing we deal with on daily basis are traders is stress uh, mm. stress is just killing you you know uh, especially uh, i'm one of the i'm one of this uh, you know traders who suffer from stress a lot in for my personal uh i got just affected in different ways because of stress in personal life and it's really challenging you know because at the end we are humans and uh and we and our mental ability is, is sometimes is limited and you have pressure you have burnout you have uh and it's, sometimes it's hard i think one of the most important things you can do um uh, in trading to reduce stress is accepting losses, is making sure this game is all about accepting losses. 
uh, we say here, we have a saying here, we say, at other city, we say, you've got to learn how to lose money before learning how to make money. Hmm. And make and making money the right way, uh, losing money the right way, better than making money the wrong way. I don't know if it makes sense. It does. Because me, yeah, because many people they come to us and they said, okay, I doubled my account. I'm making uh, I'm making hundred uh, percent. I'm making ninety percent. I'm making fifty percent uh, from uh, ten thousand account. Those people we don't we don't take them on board to be honest because we are just scared of them and we think they are gamblers. They are not trained. And we've got some people, they come to us and they said, okay, I've got my, uh, my account size, um, I've got my account, but I'm just down 1%. Um, I'm, I'm down half percent, I'm down 3%. For, that, for us as, as a firm, as professionals, we prefer to give our capital to someone who is down 2%, better than someone who is up 60%. Because we know this guy is up 60% is going to lose everything at the end of it because he doesn't have risk parameters. And this person who is 2% down, we know even if he's not going to produce alpha or make profit, he's going to, to, to keep the balance. And this is what is quite challenging. For that, accepting losses is very important uh, to, to reduce those costs because it's like you need to teach yourself saying losses are part of the game. Like uh, doing any business, if you have, I don't know if you have a business experience, you have expenses. Any business have, in the world have expenses. Only trading without expenses. And our expenses are our losses. And we need to accept them and they are part of, uh, of our daily thing uh, and it reduces them. The second thing is the planning, uh, is the stop loss. When you, when you enter to any trade, you need to put on your head, there is two scenarios. There is no the third one. Scenario one, losing, how much I lost? I'm, I'm, I'm willing to lose. I'm willing in this trade to lose a couple grounds. It's a couple grounds. It's out, out of my pocket. It's gone. Mm. How much I'm willing, you know, to make from this trade? Like two questions. Like that you reduce the stress and you prepare yourself psychologically from, you know, uh, the outcome is going to be. So that if it's good outcome, that's good, perfect, it's nice. If it's bad, you are prepared already. And this is the second thing you can do definitely to, to reduce the stress, which is a planning and preparing yourself psychologically of worst case scenario, you know? Uh, and the third thing is just having a, uh, a good life work balance because nowadays many people, and I did that in the past as well, is just mixing up between uh, your, 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 your job, which is trading and your personal life and other things. Uh, you know, you become like a uh, sort of addicted in a way. I don't want to use this negative word, but this is the reality. It's a way of addiction, and you become like uh, over passionate about it, and you keep talking to everyone about trading. Your girlfriend, you keep telling her about trading, and you know it's just uh, quite weird and funny stories coming from the, this this world. But I, I think separating between your job and your uh, trading. And your personal life is very important. For that reward is very important, making a good balance. I think those three things, are, there is a long list. Uh, if I'm going to go through this, it's going to take a long time. But I think this is the main three important things, at least to start uh, trading, uh, to avoid any stress and burnout as, as, as a trader. Mm. Um, so... When you, maybe not when you started trading, but maybe when you started the, um, the prop firm, was there anyone that you uh, looked up to inside or outside of trading? Uh, do you mean like a sort of a mentorship or things like that? Um, yeah, maybe a mentor or just someone that you aspired to be like. Uh, yes, to be honest, in general, uh, learning from other people, uh, this is the best human experience you could have, you know, especially now with technology and uh, this uh, social media, you have access to, you know, many interesting people you can learn from. Uh, but to be honest, I think in trading, especially in this industry, Everyone has got his own journey. It's an adventure. 
and mm. everyone he got his own adventure. Okay, uh, maybe you can get some advices, you can get some tips, you can try, but uh, I'm not, I'm not, to be honest, that uh, uh, buying this idea of copying someone in a way of doing business or in a way of trading, because trading, as I said, is an art, and everyone is doing it his own way. It's like you look for something you suit you suit your personality, you suit your character, you suit what you are trying to achieve in your life. Uh, and everyone is different. You can be like anyone. Uh, you have now gurus. Uh, I don't believe in this guru thing, but do you got some gurus that are just, you know, pumping us with these ideas of, you know, copy what we are doing. But uh, you can learn. It's going to, you can get a shortcut. You can get some advice. You can save time. You can save money. But you could never be a copy of someone, mm. especially in trading. At least in trading, uh, everyone is different. Everyone is, his reaction is different. Everyone has got his own brain. Everyone has got our mental, uh, uh, you know, our mental, uh, his own behavior, his own reactions, his own psychology, how he feels, the feelings, uh, uh, financial situation, uh, social situation, how, you know, th there is a lot of things involved, you know. Uh, and definitely trading is really challenging for a human. Uh, level, you know, from psychological point of view, uh, because you're just uh, uh, learning about yourself as as a person and uh, uh, as as a trader on daily basis. You keep improving, and it just makes you a better person. Uh, and doing business, especially in London, uh, is, is really hard. Trust me, because uh, London is a really highly competitive place. The city of London, when you are small and just starting, and you are playing with the big guys. Um, you know, and this highly, highly competitive uh, world is not like uh, other industries. Uh, and to survive, because we have seen thousands of thousands of firms coming every year and closing down and closing down. It was quite just ap apocalyptic as, 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 as an approach because many people, you see them coming, putting money, and they just after three, four, five, six months saying, oh, we can't handle anymore, we are closing down. Uh, it, it's, it's a long process. But uh, I think what it makes us uh, as a firm and uh, even as an individual to keep going, I think the only thing is passion because we are passionate about this industry and we are passionate about trading. Me personally, I don't know to do other things, you know. Uh, I enjoy what I'm doing and uh, I think the only thing that keeps me going is, is, is passion. Uh, and this is the secret of uh, what it makes us quite today successful and uh, doing well. Uh, Otherwise, I think the sacrifice has been quite big, especially mm -hmm. on a personal level and the professional level and the, the pressure and the, the struggle you have to face on a daily basis. I think uh, it's been quite an expensive price to pay. Yeah. Um, so what would you say is the worst piece of advice that you have been given, trading related or business related? The best or the worst? The worst. <laughs> the worst. The worst is actually wishing. It's like wish, so, you know, way of thinking is like wishing. It's like you wish something and you just, because it's pleasing you psychologically and it makes you more comfortable mentally, you're going to keep lying to yourself that those things is going to happen because is going to suit you and is going to make you more comfortable. Mm. Wishful thinking. If, if I can find a word, this wishful thinking is the worst thing uh, I got as an advice, and I I just did it, and um, I still regret it. And it's one of the most difficult things to protect yourself from it, you know, in, in, in trading and in business, because by wishing things, you're just uh, losing touch with reality because in this business don't, no one is going to care about you you know I've seen thousands of thousand people uh, you know collapsing because of this industry and just closing you know losing their, li their, their life savings and gambling with their money and gambling with their future and, and just opening trades and saying, oh, he's going, he's coming back. I hope he's going to be back. I hope he's going to be back. And the trade is keeps going down, down. 
and he's, he keeps buying it. So he's going to pay back and he keeps buying it. And when he gets a margin call, he says, ah, oh, no, the market is funny. Uh, and he doesn't want to admit it, that it's his fault. Mm-hmm. Because many people, they look for something to blame. We have seen thousands of people, especially from these old traders we have at the moment, uh, they never blame themselves. They always blame someone. They blame the weather, they blame the computer, they blame the execution, they blame the platform. This is human uh, nature, you know? Uh, I think wishful thinking is, is, is the worst advice of being given and uh, uh, is one, one of the most difficult things I have to face in order to improve and change my way of thinking and my way of dealing with things and and my way of behaving uh, when it comes to taking decisions, uh, either in business or, or, or in, in, in trading in general. Mm. And what would you say is the best piece of advice that you've been given? Yeah, this is a good question, actually. <laughs> the best piece of advice I've been given, actually, is uh, accepting reality. It is what it is. You can't change the world. And you can't keep uh, blaming yourself because blaming is not going to change anything. You have to accept that you did a mistake. You have to accept that it was your decision. You have to assume it. And uh, learn from this experience and move on. But Mm. by blaming yourself and keep, you know, beating yourself on a daily basis, saying, oh, is this going to affect you more? And it's not not going to give you the opportunity to learn from this experience. For that, I think uh, accepting reality is very important. It's very important in business and trading in general that when you make a mistake, you need to recognize it was a mistake, and uh, this is part of, of life and part of this job, and uh, learn from it and move on. What's next? Yeah, and that, that's tricky for a lot of people as well. Um, it is. It is. Uh, it is tricky. Uh, even you know, even myself, I find it quite tr- difficult and tricky uh, because you are just uh, putting yourself. Because you know, this is human nature. They said. Uh, humans that are more willing to believe a lie is suiting them than facing a truth who doesn't make them comfortable. And this is what is happening in trading. Uh, and one of the challenging things here, actually, with uh, when we when we uh, hire people for the hidden science program, the first challenging thing we do is educate them and managing the expectations. Because I know you are, you have seen these thousands of thousands of Instagram accounts, and those uh, I don't know to be to be rude, but the gurus and the, those conmans and the charlatans saying, "Oh, this industry can make millions. Uh, this is Ferrari. This is a helicopter. This is uh, my island. I bought an island in uh, <laughs> in, in Caribbean, and uh, I've become a millionaire. Let me teach you how to become a millionaire like me." And things like that, and Hollywood, and the Wall of Wall Street, and all these uh, those things, we have to face them on a daily basis. Imagine, and outstand to be an uh, to outstand from these people in a way you are communicating and uh, compete. No, we are not in competition directly with them, but we are just trying to do the right thing. Uh, and getting someone coming to you and saying to him, "Listen, if you want to become a trader, it takes time." This is like a normal job, like any other job. If you want to be a doctor, you have to be in hospital, and it takes you seven years to to, to become a practitioner and moving, and it's like a normal job. Trading is we are lucky; it doesn't take seven years, but it takes time. It's not overnight thing. And when he goes to this Instagram guy guru, say to him, "Listen, pay me 10k, and you can become a successful or profitable trader within two days or two weeks." You know, some people they they believe they, they believe that because they they want that. And we, our job and our moral duty as as professionals, and this is what we do on a daily basis. We organize seminars with universities like LSC Imperial College. We go to the students, we do educate them about, about the industry. Uh, and one of the most important things 
from our narrative and our message is just to say to them, listen, this job is highly rewarding. Well, I'm not saying the opposite. It's good. You can make a career out of it. You can do whatever you want, but it's not going to have an overnight. And it's not like uh, some people that are trying to sell it, selling a dream, sitting in a beach somewhere in Caribbean and having a laptop and you can work one hour a day and you can make five grand a day. This is, mm. doesn't exist, just in movies. You see mm. what I mean? So that is, it's, quite, it's quite challenging. Uh, and, uh, but uh, we, we managed to convince quite a many people who, who approach us in terms of uh, just to educate them about our job and what we are, what we are doing on a daily basis. Yeah, um, and I think that mainly the, the quick returns um, for, for me anyway and for traders that I know stems from not having the patience um what, what would you say to someone who struggles with patience when trading yes uh this is one of the most important you know uh, problems we face uh on daily basis especially mm. with people who are starting to tra trading uh but, um, you know isn't I, I always say it's, it's part of it's, it's part of our human nature. We are always impatient and we always try to make profit and make uh, and make uh, a lot of money. And this is the best scenario could could happen, you know. But you have to understand that nothing comes from nothing in this and this world. You have to sacrifice. You have to work hard, and you have to manage your expectations. It's all about managing expectations. Uh, and all expectations always hurt. There is the saying, this is, expectations always hurt. Managing expectations is, is very important. And one of the most important uh, things you have to manage is your financial expectations, okay? Doesn't mean you're going to start trading today. You're going to start making quite a good income tomorrow. This is a journey. You are learning. It's a learning curve. You are developing, mm -hmm. okay? You can get lucky once, twice, three times, four times, but doesn't mean you become profitable. If you're going to ask me what's a profitable trader, and it's based on the research we did here at the City Capital, a trader, he is someone who, has, who is profitable for the last 90 days. There is this industry, this norm of 90 days. They always say in the bro broker's, they say 90 days. If someone he either lose all his money in 90 days or he's going to become profitable in, nine, uh, you know, with, if you are making profit consistently, consistently with, with, within within period of three, 90 days, it means that you have the label of being profitable. Mm. Make sense? Yeah. 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 So that uh, is very important to just managing because we receive some people they said okay i'm having a job i'm going to quit my job and come to do this program and become a trader and i can make a, a 10k a month no so no you can't do that it doesn't work like that because if you are under pressure and you have fun any sort of financial pressure it's really difficult to perform and do well it's very hard and this is what you know this is what is very important for us when we educate someone about the financial industry is just telling him that you need to make sure you are financially secure before starting this journey to make it smooth and the transition from what, whatever you are doing to becoming a professional trader is going to be smooth and nice without having these problems of... Uh, because, you know, for example, here in London, it's a very expensive city. You have to pay your rent, you have your expenses. If you're going to stop your job and move into trading and you're going to be under pressure of paying your bills, you can't make money. You can't. The, the market is happy to give you the money, but you can't guarantee it. It's just you are, you are against, uh, it's against, it's against yourself. You are, you are working against yourself because when you're under pressure, you can't produce alpha and you can't perform well. Mm, yeah. Um, and if someone is kind of looking to become a six or seven figure trader, mm -hmm. what advice would you give them? Take it slowly. 
have a plan and uh, everything comes with time. Mm. And it's the best thing you could do for yourself because it just, this is a wonderful job. You can have your own financial, uh, your financial freedom. Uh, you are your own boss. You can travel. You can do whatever you want. There is no limit. Because, you know, trading is like an entrepreneur journey. You start with losing. And from losing, you go to break even. And from break even, you start producing profit. And when you start producing profit, there's no limit. You can just keep growing, 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 and, and, and developing. So that this is what I think it makes uh, a good trader who is looking have like a proper plan. Uh, and another thing is be, make sure to have a mentor, which is you need to make yourself accountable. Whatever, even if you if you can't afford to have a mentor, just get someone who you know it makes you accountable in terms of trading what you are doing on a daily basis. The third thing, journal, keep a journal. It's just it's business. You need to deal in trading other business. Every decision you need to sit down and analyze and say, this is wrong, this is right, I learned from this, I'm not going to do it again. And this is the right thing, I'm, I have to do it again. You know, this is how it works. Mm. And the fourth thing, which is very important as well, is managing your risk because in this game is all about surviving. If you can survive tomorrow and you have enough capital to trade, it's fine. But if you're going to put all your eggs in one basket and you have a margin call and lose, you're out of the game. And when you're out of the game, you can't trade. That's why it's just quite uh, a good journey, but you need to plan for it. It's, it's adventure is good, it's not boring. Uh, you're just nine to five. You are not part of the right race. You are independent. You are growing, but you need to work for it. And we have seen some good results on, uh, you know, thousands of thousands of success stories. Uh, and you know, being in the right environment around the right people, it gives you, it saves you time, it saves you money, and offer you a shortcut because by being around professionals, it's going to help you to avoid the hiccups and avoid the mistakes they did in the past yeah yeah i i agree um there was a, a quote i can't remember who said it um but it was something like you have two basic rules in trading if you don't bet you can't win and if you lose all your chips you can't bet exactly make make big sense this yeah. is what i'm trying to say yeah in other words <laughs> yeah yeah i think that's really good um so I have one final question, which yes. is what's some non-conventional advice that you'd give to a trader that wants to succeed? Uh, starting with the right part. Hmm. Because the problem in this industry, in the past, it was quite challenging for us as a players in, the, in this industry to get access to the information. But nowadays, is really challenging to protect ourselves from the noise of the answer because we have a fl massive flow of information coming to us on a daily basis. We need to make sure we protect ourselves from the noise because there's too much noise. If you go to Twitter, you go to any social platform, you will get thousands of people bombarding you every on, on, on minute basis about trading and marketing. Make sure you start with the right path. Make sure to protect yourself from people who waste your time, give you the wrong advice, and just trying to sell you last dream or courses or things like that. Uh, and another thing as well, which is very important to take in consideration for someone who is starting to starting want to become a professional trader, is have a proper mid short medium and the long term plan like you are running a business this is this is a business like you want to set up a company and you have a plan the same thing for trade you are starting something you need to work take it seriously grow develop and just you be get, you, you will get it i'm sure if you are if you know what you are doing you'll be on top because nowadays 
we, we have all what we need in, for us to succeed as, as traders. Yeah. Um, is there anything else that you would like to say? And also, where can people find you? Uh, yes, we are open. We are positive. We are not only like uh, money-driven guys who are trying to sell. We don't have a sales team. We don't like uh, to to promote or uh, do marketing. And we make our money from the market. We are traders. We are passionate about the market. Uh, and we are trying to protect our uh, job we love from people who are just taking advantage from it. It's like uh, selling dreams and uh, giving the wrong impression and people they start play, blaming all the players in the industry saying that all are the same uh, and this is what we are trying to do as I said we organize seminars we go to universities we go to just educate people about our job and this mm. is the right message to send to anyone who is thinking to join the financial industry um, and I think with this pandemic and with what is happening I think anyone he needs to learn how to speak money. It's a language. You need to learn how to speak money. You need to learn how to trade, especially for those millionaires and people who are young and they have, they are lucky, you know, because there is all these opportunities at the moment. They need to take advantage from these opportunities. And, uh, you know, tough time is coming, you know, especially with this pandemic and the recession and depression, hopefully, is not going to be that bad. Uh, Yes, for that, as I said, if you want to take this job seriously, the capital.co.uk, there is the Hidden Talents program, you can apply for it. Uh, uh, and we invite you for an interview. We'd like to find out more about you, what you do, what you're trying to achieve. And you've got the second program, the Fund the Trader program as well, if you need funding. Um, yeah, for that, anyone who thinks that he can uh, succeed and make it and he, he got what it takes to become professional trader he's, he's welcome to to join us and we are more than happy to help him and develop a long-term relation with him we've got some traders they joined us eight years ago and they're still with us until now and are just making a living and we always we are maybe the most happy person to see someone succeeding uh, because it's just uh, we, we are really passionate about this and this thing. We would like to see more people joining our game and doing the right thing and doing it the right way.